What is going on, you guys? It's your boy, Kiss My Ass Jackson here, and we're back with episode 80 of the Video Game Therapy series. A nice, round, divisible by 10 number. Um, not that 80 has any other significance beyond that, at least to me. I'm sure to somebody it does, but anyway, um, we're back. Today I have a rather, uh, I won't say controversial topic, because it's not really controversial. I suppose it's just a very common, uh, commonly discussed topic that I have, obviously, I have some beef with, because it seems like that's my whole MO, is just having beef with um, things that people enjoy talking about. So anyway, um, the concept in question, if you're wondering, is... Artificial General Intelligence. That's right, AGI. It's been a big buzzword throughout the past couple months and probably years or so, depending on how plugged into the technological fears um, you have uh, been into. But yeah, AGI is very, very common. But the reason I hate it, which maybe you can guess if you have heard enough of my other musings, what we have no concept of... <laughs> Sorry, <clears throat> we have concepts. We have no accurate concept of intelligence. Like, what does that mean? Um, I mean, we have... I'm sure I'm sure you could categorize uh, intelligence, right? We have, like, maybe, like, a physical intelligence, you know, like an ape or something. We have kind of a, uh, you know, women, I guess, genetically have more emotional intelligence. Again, not even if we're able to define emotions that well. Um, and maybe we, we ascribe like academic or institutional intelligence with our common like IQ version of intelligence. But I mean, anyone who's been around high, higher education for long enough knows that there's an enormous difference between, you know, this colloquial book smart or academic intelligence or IQ with anything, any kind of even useful intelligence. Maybe there's like a practical intelligence because you could put like farmers and people who can fix their own tractors and like you know, can hear the heartbeat of their engine or something like that. That is some kind of intelligence we're unable to, you know, measure or appreciate. You know, maybe we can measure it, but even even so, we don't, you know, we don't appreciate that kind of intelligence. Regardless, I mean, it, it, there's not even, like, someone would say, well, we'll just, let's just simplify it and use IQ as intelligent. Um, like, the IQ test that we have, I mean, I've berated these on several occasions, but I guess I'll rip it apart again incredibly stupid measure of intelligence like somebody with you know a quote-unquote 800 iq you're telling them they you're telling them you're telling me that they are eight times eight times smarter than somebody with a 100 iq so okay what does that mean they can solve problems that are eight times harder how do we measure how hard a problem is like how many people get it right well but then you're you're still but we're not comparing like aggregates to aggregates we're comparing an individual to another individual not like the average person right but like Maybe to the average person, this problem is, you know, 100 difficulty, you know, if we're just going to put a random number with it. But to this particular person, it is more difficult because of their relationship with the language and the way the words phrase. Because we're also using, like, even to ask these questions of intelligence, we're using, like, a lossy medium, right? And the reason language is so, is fun, I guess, to me at least, is it because it's, like, it's, it's totally imperfect, even just by design. Like, words that mean one thing to me mean something entirely different to somebody else. And this, you know, like, multiplies the confounding variables with any kind of intelligence measurement, right? So if you, you know, even, even like your concept of a word, you know, like a multiplication or something is like a super basic word. That word might mean something very mathematical and concrete, but they're still very, very different uh very very different like things that deeper than what we're able to articulate i'm even having trouble doing it myself then what, what that means right like some people see that see multiplication like through an entirely visual lens like if you say eight times six they don't just like oh yeah 48 they just they think of like oranges or something like side by side or they think of matrices or they have some other weird thing that's like our relationship with words is <clears throat> is totally imperfect which i think is great because it allows it's it's a huge there's a lot of artistic real estate there with, you know, poetry, music, rapping, all that other shit. Um, writing, even in general, like writing is kind of an, an art in that sense and that you get a lot of creative freedom with, you know, what the words mean to you and how you can like use them and different things. And that's half of what I like to do <laughs> when I write is just, I mean, because you read my writing, it's like, I mean, it's not good. It's 
it's not good in the sense that it doesn't to many it might not make any sense and that's not because i think good writing and this is my, this is actually a separate beef i'm gonna get back to intelligence first but i want to i want to rip on this because it's also on my list here the concept of of good writing um i guess in school is just like mass appeal right can your teacher understand what this writing means and does she like the way you write kind of thing that, that's like that's like good writing to you know does your teacher like it and does it make sense because like I enjoy, for whatever reason, however twisted and sick it might be, I enjoy sometimes using, like, like some would call flowery language or Victorian speak or just esoteric ways of phrasing things that make it such that my writing is sometimes like, wait, what the fuck did he say? But that's part of what I like. What I like doing, <laughs> I just kind of like being, I don't know, kind of challenging myself to see if I can still make. Not in the sense I want to make it make less sense to make like more sense, but there's there's still like some creative freedom with it. Because like you could say very plainly that oh like the dog jumped over the fence, and sure that's like a very you know okay the dog jumped over the fence. But what maybe I would do is like you know uh, I don't know instead of dog I would use the word like canine or something like that, which of course a dog makes more sense. But I would say like this you know a unique species of canine bounds into the air you know like and then you're like why don't you say the dog jumped over the fence you idiot and it's like i understand that that will, would get me like this good grade in writing class because it's clear it's to the point you know but whereas the moment i say oh the canine bounded you know bounded into then maybe it's like a metaphor for a fence instead of fence it's like you know a barrier of wood or something like that. i don't know you could you could you could fuck with it all you want but regardless it's still seen as like bad writing if i don't you know just say the dog jumped over the fence and I guess that's a whole other thing about subject subjectivity of bad writing. Some teachers do the opposite, and they just, if you say the dog jumped over the fence, it's like, that's bad, because you should have said, you know, the canine jumped over the barrier of wood or something like that. Anyway, it's it's all stupid. Regardless, I, good writing, the whole concept of good and worse writing, I think, is a is flawed in itself. So I, that's like, I, I guess, one big part of it. Anyway, anyway getting back to intelligence. Um I forgot how I got off the the tangent of writing, but regardless, my my beef with artificial general intelligence is that we don't we have a horrible conception of what intelligence means. Like we're unable to people just. I mean, I ask you right now, what what does intelligence mean? Being able to do stuff or like knowing stuff. What does that mean? How do I know that you know anything? Well, well a written test. Okay, a written test. There's confounding variables right there. Like a brain scan. We could brain scan your brain. Like even fine, brain scan me. How do you know what I know by a brain scan? You fucking don't. So what how, What do you mean knowing stuff? Is that intelligence? What about like knowing stuff and doing something with it? Okay, well, that's still, you're, we're still kind of adding stuff to our concept of intelligence here. Um, or what about like being able to like know something and then being able to articulate it, right? Is, is it possible that somebody could know something and not be able to articulate it? Probably, but does that mean they don't know it or they aren't intelligent in that regard? I don't know. You tell me. So even even so, like we don't. I'm not saying I have a definition of intelligence because I don't. I just don't like that we are like, oh, when artificial general intelligence comes, what the what is intelligence anyway? What does that what does that mean? I don't. I, don't, I like. And I realize it's a kind of a it's a point arguing about the etymology or epistemology of the word intelligence. I understand that, but that is I would argue the only like the, the most important discussion to be had around what what even AGI is, right? Because at a certain point, depending on how you define this, this, ooh, this AGI, it, it, it's, it's here, I guess, or it's not. It'll never be here. Like the way I define intelligence, which actually I don't really concretely define it because I think it's kind of a useful, useless term, but the way I view artificial general intelligence is that it will, we're not even fucking close. Like our, we don't even understand like how our brain we have, you know, we have the concept of the neuron, okay, and we've we've kind of applied that to, you know, our machine learning networks, and you know, we have this kind of intelligence. But I would argue that we still have a very rudimentary understanding of how the brain functions and how knowledge or even how anything works, right? Again, I mean, we're, we're kind of we're making progress. I'm not saying that we're not going anywhere. We will never, but we are bounds and leaps away from any like a conception of what I would call like even a, not even AGI or some machine implementation of intelligence. We can't even define intelligence. We don't even know how the fucking brain works. So I don't know. The way I look at AGI is that we're not even fucking close to it. 
because we don't even know what we can't define intelligence. And if we are unable to define intelligence, we are unable to design a system capable of general intelligence. So, okay, we could we could just put some examples on paper here to I don't know, better illustrate the point. Um, so, okay, well, you say, well, an artificial general intelligence is something that is capable of doing general tasks. Again, I don't know what that means. At an intelligence, at intelligence level equal to or better than humans. Well, I mean, I'm sure, certain that if we just threw enough manpower at, you know, at a large enough set of quote unquote general problems, we would reach this, oh, this AGI because, you know, humans aren't, I mean, humans are complicated and the brain is very, very complicated, but the general tasks that we do are not that complicated. Like, you know, what do we answer Slack emails? I can make a shell script do that. You know, there's like, but these general tasks is not, <laughs> that does not equate to intelligence in my mind. So the fact that this like AGI could do general tasks would not give it my stamp of AGI. Maybe I just have a higher threshold or a higher or more scrutiny on what I would consider intelligent. But the current systems we have are in no way, shape or form any, <laughs> like any form of AGI. They are, I mean, I wouldn't even call them really intelligent. I just think they're, they're just a mach machines that like have functions, right? They don't, I don't know. That. I don't know. I just I have a very stringent uh, barrier on, on what intelligence is. I think we, in order for us to have any kind of hope at developing intelligence systems, not even that we should, but if we wanted to, um, we'd have to have a better conception of intelligence in the first place. Like we we don't we have no idea. We don't know what that means. Like an IQ test is not intelligence. That's just that's a test. <laughs> Now, I would I would I would hesitate to even call it like uh, intelligent intelligent at all. Maybe the whole word has just been ruined by by IQ tests and the like, and our own even like testing as a whole. Like in order to you know to assess something, we have to have assessments or tests. But all of those, there's no like truly ob objectionable way of doing that or objective way of doing that. All the tests that we like a fallible biased human is going to surprise surprise develop a fallible biased test which will then be confounded by more fallible biased humans the human brain is a, basically a machine that is a biased machine that's all it does it's just generate bias you know it's an emotional little bot that feels something emotionally and then figures out some roundabout way to rationalize it and make make it make sense like i i subscribe to the notion that humans aren't rational creatures but instead are rationalizing creatures i don't forgot who said that some psychologist maybe it was young or something like that um but I, I we really don't like as much as we want to be objective we are almost trivially subjective in in all of our happenings everything we do is basically just an emotional knee jerk and then we go hmm how can i make this make logical sense and the ones who are most quote-unquote rational are they just the best ones at rationalizing their emotions <laughs> or very articulate in their way of doing so right um so it's not that they're like they're just as tied to their emotional being that anyone else is and i'm not saying this is a bad thing what's good is that we've we have machines now that are a bit more objective and everyone's you know if, if humans are so objective why are we so terrified of these perfectly objective machines well it turns out humans are not that objective <laughs> and uh, you know objectively speaking Maybe a lot of these machines think that we should die. <laughs> That's what maybe a lot of people are scared of, which is fair, I suppose. Um, and I'm not saying I'm not scared of these AI systems. Um, I'm scared of the humans themselves. The ones that are stupid and emotional are the ones who are who kind of pose a threat to be able to program it with their stupid emotions or stupid, you know, their stupid emotions. And then the machine logically goes, okay, well, I'm going to maximize paperclips for you because, you know, this thing wanted me to. Because um, it doesn't know any better, doesn't have any concept of emotion, or really any, any concept of intelligence. It's really just a very sophisticated uh, machine capable of, uh, I don't know, emulating a very simple structure of the brain, which again is an abstracted structure of the brain. Because again, if we, if neurons were the like, if it, neurons gave us all the answers to how the human brain works. We would be able to just measure all kinds of stuff by just sticking someone's, you know, sticking some electrodes on somebody and measuring all their brain signals. But no, we have like the brain signals give us this like weird, lossy kind of 
shitty, somewhat contrived conception of what somebody's thinking or you know what part of their body they're moving. You know, not even to mention stuff that is almost completely unexplored or ignored of like, you know, dreams. And I guess I'm big on dreams right now just because I'm I'm reading Young's work and that was a big part of his in the subconscious. But we have no, what is that? What does that mean? Do we have any answers on that? No. It's like, oh, well, it's, you know, we just should, we should just ignore them. Okay, well, you know, it's just some irrational part of our being. It's okay, well, all right, so we seem to be these rational creatures, but we have this weird part where, you know, we're irrational in our dreams. We should, we should just ignore them. It's like, okay, well, that seems a little unscientific. You know, even from a, even from an emotional point of view, it's a little, uh, it's a little reductive. No, um, so I don't know. I, I just I really hate the argument around artificial general intelligence and whether or not it poses a threat because nobody seems to be able to define a level like adequately define what the fuck intelligence means. And until we can do that, there's really no discussion to be had on artificial general intelligence because they're not. And anyone who is peddling some kind of theory behind it or some something about or why we should be scared or whatever is someone who probably doesn't is not has an interest you know as a you know they own agi company or something stupid i don't know they have some interest behind it where or they're just dumb i don't even know um i suppose they're not we're not you know because they were not rational creatures we're just ones that are very good at stringing dots together to make it make sense so we can feel smart or something i don't know anyway i just i hate the discussions around agi but Regardless, I have uh, one more, I guess, part to amend onto the uh, the discussion. Um, so suppose, again, I'm kind of going to put my the other discussion aside for a second so I can entertain this question. Suppose that there was an AGI, again, whatever the hell that means, um, and you were able to ask it a question. But I guess you wouldn't, it's like, like a tur the Turing test question, like if you had a question to ask this, you know, supreme supremely intelligent uh you know machine basically or whatever um what would you ask it again i'm, I'm not even gonna i'm not gonna go any further into why the thing itself can't exist but or doesn't exist and won't in any current form uh but if you could ask it a question what question question would you ask it to presume that like to convince you that it is now if you're stupid or something you'd be like oh tell me to win the, win the lottery or tell me i don't know that the people have some with a self-serving interest you could you know get a really dumb answer out of it but i'm thinking more like i don't know met metaphysically how could you get this thing to i don't know i guess prove to you that it was some kind of agi no i guess the first thing i would do depending on how stupid a thought i was and this is kind of what i would be interested to know uh, is i would ask it what i would ask it <laughs> right so i'd ask the agi again I'm, whatever um you know what would you ask an agi if you were if you were not a you know, a godlike and in, omniscient intelligence or something. I, again, I don't know how we're exactly going to define the AGI here, but you know, pick your pick your dystopian fantasy, I suppose. Um, I think I, one of the things I would ask it is what what I would ask it, like what I should ask it. And I mean, it could be a really dumb answer, or it could give me like a little snarky answer or something of some kind. I'm sure that I'm not sure how it would be programmed, or it actually wouldn't wouldn't really be programmed at all. Probably, I think. If something was truly this like supremely intelligent thing, it would perhaps have programmed itself or would have, I don't know, have evolved from something that we had programmed. Because so I think, I mean, I don't know, our, certainly we have some conception of intelligence or some level of intelligence on some front or the other. And we certainly didn't, like, we weren't just crafted and built, right? It's not like, I guess, it wasn't like Minecraft where some dude just, you know, made a human and then just plopped us down. We evolved from, Again, our best theories. We evolved over millions of years to have this conception, you know, the brain and whatnot. So I think in order for something to have achieve any form of intelligence, it would have to have, I assume it would have to go through a similar process, or at least it could. I'm not sure. Maybe there's alternative modes of creation, but I don't think it could be something we could just, you know, a Python file or a selection of files or something like that that become this, you know, generally supremely intelligent being. Um so I guess that's the one thing we'd have to evolve it and have to like, you know, reach a certain, I guess, point of evolution. Maybe it's just, it's never, it's just like a different species that we've created. You know, we kind of just create a species of robot that we give very specific, you know, instructions to. So it kind of evolves within, you know, we're kind of playing God in some sense, which is, I guess, a little fucked up to think about in that, in that way. You know, humans would be playing God, you know, making machines that would then, uh, you know, 
I don't know, go to serve their ends or something. Because inevitably we'd have some absolute moron in charge of the thing, you know. Whoever's like the true god behind creating the gods is going to be some idiot with, you know, worried about money or something. Um, you know, with a poison soul, as I say, money, money poisons a soul. Uh, but anyway, I don't know, I thought, um, you know, asking what to ask it would be an interesting question to ask. Another one would be like, uh, you know, or just saying like, prove to me that you're an AGI and just see what it says. Or uh, even just like, I guess like novel scientific research would be something that at a very basic level would be just interesting to see if it's able to come up with. Now, I think it's obvious that uh, even this, uh, even a non-intelligent, non-supremely intelligent being, so even just like some stupid neural network, is probably capable at some point, eventually, of generating something that is a novel scientific, you know, something. Uh, even if it's able to, you know, we could probably design a robot that would come up with a hypothesis, design a study, and then test it, and then see what the conclusion was, you know, or then like write up a research paper or something and to prove it. That it doesn't, excuse me, that doesn't even seem that hard, right? I mean, that just seems like a couple Python script, <laughs> a couple Bash scripts, and you know, a Python library or two strung together. We could make this like novel research. Now, it may not be very good, but to be honest, we're not very good at the whole research thing anyway. You know, um, so I might even be better than us at, at on some very basic level. You know, because at least there's not. I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure this whatever this thing would be would be you know paid by the Farmers Bureau of America or something like that, or you know there's some stupid organization behind it. But even so, assuming they're one that they're one that didn't have that, they'd still be would not be. Uh, I don't know. It'd be impressive, but probably not uh, omniscient in that sense. But. Um, I don't know. I just think it's an interesting hypothetical to even consider. I think an easier one, a better one that at least I'm happier framing than I am like this AGI question is just like, what would you ask God? <laughs> you know, so I suppose then it's okay. God exists. He's the creator of the universe. Like we figured it out or somehow, I don't know. He just, he revealed himself to us or I'll, you know, just like the Bible said or whatever. I don't know. Um, what would you ask him? You know, uh, and again, I've talked about this on my blog, I suppose at length about, not really the case for God as in like the guy with the white beard, but the, the case for like something, you know, I guess worlds beyond our world of like this rationality. Cause I think it, in, in at a very high level, our conception of logic is very limited, you know, flawed and limited in the sense that there is not, it's not everything, right? I think there's a lot that logic doesn't, you know, um, you know, it doesn't, doesn't cover. But I don't know, another interesting question, I suppose, if you're more of a science head and a nerd, you just ask it for the, uh, whatever theory combines uh, quantum mechanics and general relativity. relativity. Um, but I wouldn't really give a shit about that. <laughs> um, you know, because I still think that even if we had that, would that be the end, right? Would we understand everything always, right? Then what's the point of living if everything is just, if we know everything, right? If, if we really are, we become omniscient. I think... It is incapable of something limited like our, the human mind to, you know, I guess absorb or even much less even conceptualize something infinite, right? I think our, we think we're not even like to us, infinity doesn't really exist because we're a finite mind and we're unable to, other than our abstractions, which are helpful, we can't, we don't really know what infinity even, we don't know what that is, right? We just see like something super, super, super big. But like infinite infinity doesn't doesn't really exist as far as I'm concerned to us that is uh, I'm sure it exists it exists in like a, a meta sense but we don't we don't know what that is <laughs> that's kind of my, my argument so like do I ever think that even with all the science in the world thousands and millennia years and thousands of years 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 more and more science all science we do science forever and we keep figuring stuff out do I ever think we'll be able to like, figure everything out? No, <laughs> I think I think part of what is, I guess, rewarding or fun for us humans is to be dealing around with all this crap. And I think at a certain point, it doesn't matter how much we figure out, there was never going to be, you know, an answer uh, to any of it. I think at least one there, there might there may be like an answer may exist, uh, but we won't ever be able to conceptualize it because the university, the universe is fundamentally beyond our uh highest amount of, of conception. Now, I do think that we could perhaps over a long period of time uh, evolve to have, you know, a better conception of infinity. But 
even, I, I still would argue that with a finite mind, um, we can't, we don't, infinite doesn't, infinity can't really mean anything beyond a, an abstraction to us. That's kind of my, my theory. So, I mean, I don't know, maybe there's, and again, you could always, you could like claim that you understand it. You like know infinity. Like even just doing math with infinity. Like I can do math with infinity. It doesn't mean that I under, I, I can, I can grasp something truly infinite, right? I don't think I can. I'm a limited mind. It's not really possible. I could do math with it and I can fuck around with it, but that is merely an abstraction of something. This is kind of my whole spiel that I gave. This is a long time ago. I gave a spiel on like, like math doesn't really exist. Math is, it's all kind of just, a, you know, a logical abstraction on, uh, on what we see, right. You know, or even like the numbers are themselves, like the numbers are objectionable. Like we just made those numbers up. And yes, it like is very good at giving us abstractions to wrestle with problems and like figure other stuff out with these numbers. But like the numbers themselves don't like exist in, in like, they don't exist really. Right. And like they, they work for us and they exist to us, but they don't like, like naturally exist. And I guess by that logic, there's nothing much that does exist. I suppose that's kind of a, be kind of a, I can't think of the solifist or something. It's a S O L I P H I S T S solifist is like, uh, the only thing that we know for certain exist is like you <laughs> and yourself. Cause that cause it can only really be, I guess that's one way of looking at it. If you look at it that way, cause you say, well, numbers have to exist. I don't think even nature numbers don't really exist. We've like nature doesn't say, Oh, there's two cows here or something. They're just, there are just, there are two cows and the, the two for us is our helpful, you know, counting mechanism of <laughs> to, you know, to see how many cows there are, right? Which again only really means stuff to us and is not like written down, you know, it's not growing out of a plant, right? A plant can grow, you know, five leaves, but isn't, it's not like, that's not a pre programmed thing. <laughs> I think it's part of our, our issue with intelligence is that, you know, we are most intelligent, our most logical, I suppose, is with, is with numbers, but numbers don't really, numbers don't inherently exist beyond our, usage and conception of them which is going to be difficult to kind of make something you know we can kind of emulate intelligence but then at that point you know artificial intelligence is no more an emulation of what i can do you know i can emulate a chicken that doesn't make me a fucking chicken right you know maybe to a chicken i could fool the chicken into thinking i'm a chicken but that doesn't mean that i'm like i'm a chicken right or i can we can just change the definition to where i then become a chicken well at that point like everything's gonna a fucking chicken if you can just change the definition whenever you want. So I don't know. It's it's a very very lossy, <laughs> very uh, almost fruitless conversation to have because I guess you either get it and kind of know that it's not worth discussing, or that you don't get it and you're just gonna keep arguing. Oh, rationality. Right? And uh, so I don't know. I I just really hate the argument around AGI because I don't. No one can ever seem to give me a definition of intelligence that meets my standards, or even just. If it does meet my standards, it's not useful to the discussion, right? Because then at that point, you're, you kind of have to admit that there's not, we're not really capable of conceiving, much less even developing this artificially, generally intelligent agent. It's not possible. So given what we know, you know, and I would argue kind of ever, like, you know, it's like, can we create God? It's like, no, if we, we can't create something like, uh, we can create something more stronger than us. Like we can do that pretty easily. Like machines are stronger than us. We've made, we can make a, you know, a truck can just run me over and kill me. Like, and yes, that's like a, something more powerful than me. Um, we can make something more logical than me. This, this computer that I'm playing this stupid game on can do more mathematical operations than I would dream of doing in a lifetime, you know, in a matter of seconds. Um, does that mean it's like God? I, I guess if we're only measuring it by numbers and yes, this machine is God, you know, cause it's, you know, <laughs> Uh, comparatively to me because I'm <laughs> so limited and maybe we it's just the whole part of point of artificial general intelligence is just to to fool the human into believing that it is God you know even though it is not because it you know it can't be I suppose but even so then then it also just feels like we're really just talking about when this you know perfect agent or whatever this omniscient agent then is just better than humans which it already is at pretty much anything 
Not anything specific, at least. But even anything general, like... You don't think in a few years we'll have some robot that can do dishes or something? Um, or, like, the stuff we do every day is not that complicated. It's not like we're... There's, there's very little, if anything, that we do that is, you know, not replicable by even, like, a... Half the shit we do on the computer is just done by a, a shell script, right? That was, like, an old joke of programmers is that, like... You know, don't piss me off or, or or I'll just replace you with a shell script. Um, so what we're doing is not that, not that you know, intellectual, right? Oh, I got to be nice in this call. It's like, really, you don't think I could... These voice cloners are getting pretty good. I could probably, you know, you know, a few years you could have enough, you know, samples of your voice and, you know, enough, I guess, tone analysis to fool any, you know, that other idiot on the line into thinking that you're being nice or something about whatever the fuck you guys have to talk about. So I'm not, I don't know, I'm not convinced that we have any accurate or helpful definition of an intelligence or are anywhere even close to this artificially generally intelligent thing i think it's mostly just a sham to i don't know get people all riled up about something or get into their wallet or i don't know just fear is a very is a drug and people love it um uh, just like they love love their monies but i don't know i'll move on to something else um yeah, I guess this is I kind of related to like the whole the evolution thing. I think like I said we I said earlier in passing kind of that we could evolve to have uh, I guess a, a better conception of infinity or you know even just at, at one end of the spectrum. I'm sure there's other things we could have evolved to uh, excuse me have a better I don't know idea or grasp of. The other thing that I think is kind of interesting that we're battling our biology on is. Uh, I don't think humans, and I guess just my kind of theory that I'm, you know, postulating on. Uh, you, you think about, I don't know, work in its, co in its current sense now. It's like you sit down for eight hours or four hours and then four hours or whatever. Like, and you're working on these kind of, I guess if you're, you know, in, if you're not like just a grunt worker somewhere. Uh, <laughs> um, you're working on this like long kind of harder problem that is broken. You know, we've broken up into a bunch of pieces. It's kind of difficult, like longer term, high level problem solving. I don't know that evolutionarily we were cut out for that i don't think that you know i think about even like prehistoric humans weren't really think they weren't you know not only were they not sitting down for eight hours <laughs> they were you know, pretty much always walking around or doing stuff but it was never like this you know the problems never lasted or weren't like larger than you know you know i guess physically would be like an elephant or something that they have to kill but they certainly wouldn't be you know intellectually much longer than a few seconds or even just a few you know maybe a few minutes or something if they had to you know which way am i going here i need to go this this way and this way okay um but i don't know i, I just i think we're not really evolutionarily suited to i mean of course doing anything I mean, don't even get me started on the whole computers thing but i even think like the nature of the problems that we are tasked with solving is kind of inherently not our biological and evolutionary impulse which is not to say that we shouldn't be doing it. I'm not saying we should only live according to our nature and then just, you know, fuck rampantly or something. Because really, I mean, that's kind of our whole nature is predicated on making more of the humans. So that, that would be our only real focus for us would be just to reproduce more. They're not advocating for it. So certainly we have to change a lot. But I I, send, I just think the, uh, the notion of like thinking, you know, deeply about a very difficult convoluted problem that is going to last years and you know, designing a scalable architecture for this huge, you know, you know, medical database. It was just not at all what <laughs> this is so far away from our biology. So it's, it's really no wonder that we suck at it compared to, you know, machines, even like the dumb ones that we make are still better than us at most of that shit, because it's just not, we've designed the machines to, you know, function and be good at what we want it to do. We don't really get to design ourselves in that sense. And this ties to, I guess, what I, what I'm dubbing like my bandwidth theory, which again, maybe, maybe somebody else formulated it somewhere else. I don't know. I'm just, this is just my, my thoughts. Um, but I think, you know, cause I, you know, I see, see people that are, you know, hustle bros or gym bros or whatever. And they all seem to have this, like, they claim that, you know, we're all falling short of our capacity and you could, you know, I work for 90 hours a week or something like that, which I would agree with them in the sense that we don't, most people, are gluttonous on you know their whatever their innate leisure time is like they just take way too much time doing jack dilly shit they obviously eat way too much but i think like you know there's no way in fuck that 
even like even from a genetic perspective <laughs> that a human is i guess besides from being like a anomaly so i guess your average you know your aggregate or average human there's no way in hell 90 hours of productive focus work is is remotely possible a week no chance like absolutely not there's just no way like e even if you itemize everything down to the second i just don't think it's we were ever created to do anything remotely close to that and if you're able to do that it is like a genetic anomaly so the my my bandwidth theory which is related to this is that we have you know there's different ways of categorizing tasks that we do we have like physical stuff we do so like you know how much time you could spend doing something physical how much time you could spend doing something social like i can't you know people can't be around people forever they need time alone um they time doing intellectual stuff so time kind of thinking and ruminating or whatever and then obviously like time spent resting and whatnot and i think there are natural bandwidths to each of these buckets and there is some flexibility on how you can you know you can kind of there's some wiggle room you know in the sense that you know, maybe genetically you're only predisposed to work, you know, to kind of sit at a, a debt to intellectual work for, you know, 40 hours a week. And maybe you're able to kind of stretch it to like 60 or 65 or something like that. I don't know. Or even like lifting is probably a better example. Like, you know, you can't obviously anyone with who has their head up their ass is not going to tell you that you can lift. You can be in the gym for 12 hours a day. You're never going to go. In, you're going to die. Like there's just, it's just not even possible at all. So like the idea that like, yeah, I think most people probably aren't going to do enough, but the fact that if you honest to God believe that you could be spending every second of every day, like, no, you obviously only have a certain bandwidth before you kind of exhausted that level. And it's obviously flexible. I think like, you know, you spend, uh, you spend, you go to the gym enough and you can get, you can spend, you can probably spend 20 or so hours doing physical exercise, maybe even like 30 or 40. I, th I think you could probably, you know, but there's certainly, it's not. 150 right so same with like intellectual work any moron who claims to be doing 90 or 100 hours of work is either like severely autistic to the point where they have this like rain man superpower to be able to sit and work for that long or they're hilariously laughably not productive in the sense that they're just like their idea of work is just plopping at the computer and like farting around with an email or something like that but there's no way that your your brain just can't focus on any difficult and or like active activating problem for anywhere near that amount of time so they're just a lying piece of shit that's half the reason why i hate so many of the hustle shit culture stuff is because they're getting it people people are getting attacked to all ends yes i, I realize that most people don't meet their intellectual bandwidth they don't they don't even push their intellectual bandwidth they just they they're sitting well below it they don't push their physical bandwidth and they don't push even their, like their social bandwidth right i think you have a social bandwidth maybe you can spend 30, 40, 50, 60 hours a week, you know, or maybe like, maybe it's like 20 talking and like 80 just being around or like a hundred just being around or something like that. I don't know. You have to look at the, you know, the, the hours in the week and do some math or something. Um, but the idea that like, uh, that you're, you're capable of like these essentially inhuman ratios of time spent doing certain things is absurd. Um, but people getting bombarded on every end thinking that you're able to like, you could realistically work for 90 hours a week, realistically, you know, lift for 80 hours. Like, what the hell are you thinking? This is insane. This is actually insane. <laughs> there's no, there's, you just can't do that. It's literally impossible. Um, because I, and this is just my, I'm not using an anecdote here to back any, any with any evidence here, but I've fucked around a, a lot with my own biology. I've tried all kinds of completely like absurd stuff to try and, like milk more out of certain parts of my life. So just as an example, for the last two years, for several months, I tried a biphasic sleeping schedule with which, uh, I guess, if you can hence the name meaning you're, means you're sleeping twice, meaning I would sleep for four hours twice in a row. And it would be, I'd sleep from basically two to six to two to six, so 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. and then 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. And the reason I was doing this is just to kind of see how my body responded, or not even my body, but also my mind to see if there was you know, if I had the ability to, to like milk more intellectual time out of me. And this is kind of half the reason why I landed on this kind of bandwidth theory is because it doesn't seem like regard, I can do some stuff to like optimize me not dicking around as much. I honestly think just not using windows, you'll be infinitely more productive than you would otherwise. But even beyond that, I think there's not, there's, it's, 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 there's a cap 
right? You just cannot be any more, like there's a certain cap even to like the personal productivity part, which is, I guess the, is also kind of a case for machines doing a lot of what we do every day. Cause most of what we do is fucking pointless anyway. But I think machines, you know, having essentially a programmable amount of bandwidth in the sense that we could program it to have you know, basically unlimited bandwidth to do all the shit we don't want to do is, is I guess pretty enticing for us not to do that. Of course, collectively, I mean, you and I will probably be doing whatever bullshit we have to do forever because we're not the ones in control of the damn things. But um, certainly, you know, less work and overall has to exist. And that's part of my reason why I think that we're going to be doing stupider and stupider work as we go on. Because there's certainly no way anyone's going to embrace us not working in any sense. So we'll, I mean, we have to be doing something, some kind of, you know, work. And if it's not intellectual or physical because we've, pro we've programmed that out, It'll be something else. I'm not even sure what else we would do beyond intellectual or physical work, right? Maybe, I don't know, actually, you know, emotional work. What the hell does that mean? I don't, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I guess I'd be curious to see what, you know, even like a therapist or something is e easily programmable. Those are, you know, uh, it's kind of, we've kind of applied a very scientific theory to it, which is why I think there, you know, there's probably, there's more beyond our current conceptions of logic and rationality that we might be worth might be worth exploring because um, there's certainly there's a lot irrational about us and I think instead of rejecting our irrationality and being like oh man we just need to be more rational like machines machines are already better than us in that because we made them that way so what the hell what are we better at <laughs> if anything at all really if we're not if we can't do that we obviously can't do the rationality thing the physical labor thing too we can't even hold a candle to like the machines I mean you think you know the funniest thing was that uh is that Rick and Morty sketch where it's like man versus car. <laughs> and like there's this guy wrestling with a car and the car just runs him over. But it's like this shitty like, you know, Toyota car or something like that. But it's funny because that's really what machines are to us. And I think we'll see the same thing with like this logical work that we do is it'll essentially be man versus car. Like we're going to be destroyed by them. But that does not mean that they are like God to us. Or right? I think it does not mean there's AGI because it can do my stupid fucking, it can respond to Teams messages for me and emails. That is not, you don't need even need intelligence to do that. I can make a shell script that would respond to these dumbass emails because they're fucking stupid. You know, they're written, <laughs> you know, like that is not intelligence at all. Um, I guess it's a, it's a form of intelligence that is not, if, it's that, if that is our only conception of intelligence, then we are stupid in thinking that is what intelligence is. Anyway, my point is I think that there is probably, and I'm not sure how we're even able to explore this, and I maybe it's just me just reading <laughs> Carl Jung, but I think there is... Something beyond, uh, something not like exploring our ir irrationality or our emotional without being overly rational about it could be a very, very interesting thing. Um, in the sense that it could yield like interesting, I suppose, logical conclusions to that point, but it's conclusions of some kind <laughs> uh, about uh, humans, um, which I don't know. I, I, I just think it's, it's uh, I think going down this, like trying to be more, because that's what, kind of what I see in a lot of, I don't know, hustle bro working is that we want to, we always want to be more logical and more rational and more productive, but we're, we're fighting a losing, you know, we're, we're bringing, you know, longer swords to a gunfight, you know, or a nuke fight really, because we're just, we can't compete. <laughs> you know, we just can't, we can't fucking compete. Um, so, you know, it's not saying we should just do nothing all day, but I, I think we, I think we should think deeply about what else it is that we could do. And I guess to, to, to start, we could start by, you know, stop having people show up to battle, so to speak. I mean, stop, like, training us to, like, be these, you know, to do, you know, robotic work. <laughs> so even kind of elevate, especially if we want, you know, we want alignment. Oh, we want alignment. We want to rethink what the fuck humans are are, and what they do and what their, what their strengths, what their capability, what, 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 what even is a human? Like, even beyond... You know, we're just this conscious being who's able to speak and stuff. That okay, maybe we need to be more specific, or at least be a little bit more, you know, tongue in cheek, intelligent about how we're thinking about hum humanity at all before we start, you know, blabbering on about it. And yes, yeah, I suppose the first thing would be to elevate humans beyond the work that we are, we are we can programmatically get rid of. And that's kind of, I guess, where I'm not, where I am a bit. I, I would say progressive, but I think progressive is the wrong word. But I mean. Like someone who is uh, on the side of progress, meaning that we should free people from drudgery, right? In the same way that we freed 
people from you know physical drudgery of you know working in cornfields all day you know we send move them to be the the manager of the cornfield or the you know and that'll be the robot that can manage the cornfield himself the robot can do all that the robot can even just make us bread right we could just leave them out there and we'll just get bread on the table now what right so again assuming we're i guess part of that problem is we need to figure out how to do that to get humans sufficiently removed from the work that we can program and then second what else are we supposed to do right besides just making that more and more efficient or whatever um and I don't know, at a certain point, money is this weird medium of exchange behind the whole thing becomes an interesting talking point about why it's even useful or important anymore. So it's not saying, though, we need to give out UBI. We almost need to, I don't know, that sounds super, uh, <laughs> uh, you could just not completely get rid of money at all. That's an entire concept. It doesn't need to exist because there's no need for exchange. Now, again, that's after we've sufficiently abstracted humanity of, from drudgery of any kind which could be thousands of years away because who knows especially with how inefficient and dumb we are about our current stuff i mean for god's sakes we can't even get i mean i don't know we're we're you know probably thousands of years away from that but i'm trying to think beyond that and uh because so many people are it's so easy or it's much easier to think about like oh what do i do with my lifetime or what do we do in five years why do you get legislation fixed i'm fuck all the led government all no all of that i'm assuming i'm already trying to look past the entire, <laughs> the entire conception of that. I don't even think, like I, I think in a if we want to be truly revolutionary about the future here, government uh, of whatever the fuck you want to call it, probably won't exist at all in its current form or any mutated version of such. Or at least you know I guess in this in a utopian or more idealistic version, it wouldn't. Uh, you know we'd have there'd be something beyond our c comprehension, or at least something uh, I don't know. Not that. <laughs> I suppose to be very blunt. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe my timeline is a little too long and I should instead be thinking about, uh, you know, which insurance carrier to use, you know, Geico or State Farm or or which monopolistic uh, phone carrier do I use? AT&T? Verizon? You know, these are the really important questions that I'm supposed to be wrestling with. Um, you know, which, uh, should I use TurboTax or should I file my own, you know, whatever. I'm just, it's, it's funny to me what... <laughs> What are these quote unquote important problems that we have? And yet, I think if we try to take a step back on everything at all, it's, it just seems silly. I mean, it's just, it is silly. It's not even, it doesn't even seem silly. It's, it's silly. There's not really a better word for it. Um, juvenile, childish. Um, so I don't know. Maybe I'm the childish one because I, uh, you know, went with State Farm and not Geico. Anyway, um, I got a few more minutes here. I'll, uh, <laughs> talking about something else. Mm. Let's see. Um, oh, yeah, I guess this is my last thing. I'll talk about rating systems. I have probably have more to say on this, but I'll see if I can get through it in a few minutes. Rating systems, I think at some point, you know, this kind of goes with grades too, because I think grades are related to this, but rating systems are specifically where I want to call beef with. Like, you go to Google Maps or whatever. Ooh, five stars. Oh, five stars. Five stars is basically like you do what you say you do, right? Like, how can you give a Walmart, like, if we're truly being like, Three is average, five is like superior, excellent, and zero is like sucks balls. How can you give a Walmart a five? Like it, it shouldn't even be like Walmart should be is a three experience, like it, or if not like a two experience, right? You know, uh, it, like in terms of grocery stores, like how is it even possible that we would give Walmart a five? And that's that's my problem is like I was looking, I was getting my oil changed, and. Um, you know, you look around for things with higher ratings, and everything has a 4.5, 4.7, 4.5, 5.0, or, or whatever. Um, but like this, like none of those places have what, again, conceptually would actually be a five star experience. All of them are like twos and threes. But yeah, that's kind of our default is to be okay. If it does what it says it does, we just give it a five, right? Like if they change my oil, you know, and they only overcharge me four hundred percent, and the the guy only argued with me for forty minutes about ripping out my whole engine or something like that, then, you know, it's like a four, maybe. I don't know. It's a little shitty. It's a four. What what happened to, like, three being, like, the it does what it does, what it says it does. It's average. It's whatever. Five was reserved for, like, the supreme excellent. Now it doesn't mean anything anymore. Basically, zero is that it didn't work, and they fucked you. And five is that it worked. And they said, like, three is basically closer to zero than it is to three, more or less. I mean... <laughs> 
uh, you know, if something has a three rating, you're not going to go there because it sucks. You're only going to go to the place that has a five, but now everything has a five. You know, how, like I just, Walmart is a, the funniest example to me because how on earth could you give a Walmart a five? Like it's it, no part of even like the entire, the architects of the Walmart system, all of it, none of, none of it was like, was a five, was supposed to be a five star experience. So how, how does it have five stars? How is the rating five stars? Supposed to, that should be like two and a half or like two. Right, and it's not because it's not, it's not bad. Like we need to like shift our expectations back to like, you know, three. Same with like grades. Now every everything is one hundred. You go to grade school, every kid gets a one hundred on everything. It's all one hundreds. There's no like what happened to seventy five being good, and then anything above that was like better than average. Which average? But average is now a four point zero. So I think these GPAs are fucking pointless. Everything's a four point zero. If you don't have a four point zero, you're an idiot. And it's like what what happened to to like the it being like the you know the two or, now if you have like a C average, you're you're an idiot. You know like you're an you're like you're are gonna get kicked out of school like you're on probation. You know if you have a a, a C average, you know which that used to be. <laughs> I feel like it not used to be. Maybe it did. I don't know. Conceptually, that should be the the midpoint and not you know dog shit. So I don't know. Like my my to some of this entire diatribe. How is Walmart a five star experience? You know, how, how is someone a place that changes my oil and guy scowls at me for an hour and a half and bitches at me about my, you know, shitty air, air filter or whatever? You know, he's not going to get the 20 bucks out of me. How the fuck is that a five star experience? How, Sway? Th that is like, again, we should reframe, we should pull all of it back. Three is the average, the acceptable experience. It does what it says it does. Not like expecting a five. It will rate us five stars. But you're not a five star experience. Do you even know what five-star experience means? Do you even, like, uh, comparatively, right? <laughs> this this means it should be, you know, two standard deviations above the average. Right? Whereas basically five is that it works and doesn't suck, and zero is that it's broken. And three is basically that it is mostly broken, you know. I don't know. Stupid. Anyway, I'm going to start giving everything... I'm going to start giving everything three stars, no matter what. Even if it's out of ten, I'm still giving you a three star. But anyway, people get really mad at you if you give them three stars. You say, what a five star? Well, you're not a five-star experience. Anyway, so I'll wrap it up there. Thanks for watching. Peace out.